she committed the worst crime imaginable in the worst way imaginable. Hey guys, this is going to do your I'm back with another video. In today's video, we are looking at some true crime cases. More of a, almost like a true crime era, if you like, because I stumbled across one specific case about Jane Crompton from the 1800s. But what I discovered in my research of Jane Crompton was that there was like a, a child killing issue in the city of Hull in the late 1800s. Before we jump into this video, if you could hit that like button, if you could share the video, if you could comment down below, and by the end of the video, if you've enjoyed it, if you could hit that subscribe button, because I kind of realized, hang on, you're asking people to subscribe at the start of your video if they've just stumbled across you you haven't earned that right yet so if by the end of this video you've liked what you've seen then please do think about hitting that subscribe button okay let's jump into today's video so when you have a child and full disclosure i don't know what that is like i am not a father as yet and i'm 28 years old so it'll probably be in the next few years surely but the fact of apparently you know when you have a child you are just inundated with this surge of unconditional love i think ryan reynolds put it so beautifully where he was like you know i love my wife to death but the moment she gave birth i realized i would use my wife as a meat shield to protect that child's life so that's the kind of gravitas that a child tends to have on the parent right so that you know that feeling of love and protection well sometimes that just is not the case and in a few of the cases that i'm going to go over today but mainly the jane crompton case it is in fact the parent that kills the child now in 1873 jane crompton would bring hull to a standstill shock hull to its very core everyone would be talking about the day that jane crompton murdered her four month old baby many would argue that jane committed the worst crime imaginable but not only did she commit the worst crime imaginable of killing your own child she committed the worst crime imaginable in the worst way imaginable Sarah Alice, four-month-old daughter of Jane Crompton. On May the 15th of 1873, it was just, it was a regular day in the Crompton household, okay? Nothing to write home about. However, something was brewing. Rage was brewing. Hatred was brewing in Jane Crompton. Jane's husband, John, had left for work. He was a baker, and Jane was left with the four-month-old and their older daughter, who was three years old shortly after john left for work jane took a kitchen knife and she went on to decapitate her four month old daughter jane actually murdered her baby in front of her three-year-old it was actually widely known that jane despised her baby apparently she would tell friends that she hated the baby and that she would often wish the baby was dead Apparently, the elder daughter, who again was only three years old, said that she watched her mother take a knife and cut her little sister's head off right in front of her. After this happened, it all came out. The friends were saying, you know, that she, she came around many times and, and warned them. You know, saying, and I quote, I shall do something to my baby. I cannot do anything with it. This was a lady who, you know, by today's standards was probably suffering from postnatal depression, which, you know, is a, a mental condition of which there is a lot of help now. But of course, this is the 1800s. Help was non-existent. Shortly after murdering her, her youngest daughter, Jane took her older daughter over to a neighbor's house and just nonchalantly said, you know, I have decapitated my baby. So the neighbor ran to Jane's house in the hope that, you know, maybe the baby was still alive somehow, you know, maybe this wasn't as severe as, as Jane had made out, but the neighbor discovered the baby on the ground head separated from the body 
there were many news reports at the time, you know, that there were crowds of people outside Jane's house wanting justice and things, and she was taken into custody safely shortly afterwards. And the inquest into the baby's death deduced that there was just, there was no motivating factors behind why Jane would take such an extreme act upon her own flesh and blood. The coroner stated the law provided that if any person took away the life of another after great provocation the crime was reduced to manslaughter there could not possibly however have been any provocation in this instance the whole facts lay in a nutshell the question as to the state of the woman's mind whether it was sane or otherwise would have to be dealt with by another court and that not need engage the attention of the jury at all now initially the inquest jury came back that you know this was just a straight up murder a willful murder they called it but at her actual criminal trial a few months after the crime had taken place she was basically diagnosed with something called melancholia which is you know a form of depression but like I said, nowadays she would probably have been suffering from many things, including postnatal depression. And obviously, our understanding now of mental health compared to 150 years ago is like night and day. But Jane was found not guilty by way of insanity by the jury, but was of course detained in a asylum. This was an indefinite incarceration and the doctors there diagnosed her with extreme melancholia. This is not the only case or the only like example of this around that time. In 1885 there was a little boy murdered by his mother. His name was Joseph Hewson. And again there was no motivation there for this murder when looking at it through the lens of a, a, an 1885 law enforcement or, or doctor or coroner. But obviously again with the advice advances in understanding of mental health, especially things like postnatal depression, which so many women suffer from, just that understanding, that knowledge and the ability to help was not there at that period of time. But like I said in the intro to this video, you know, Hull, weirdly, in the Victorian era, had its fair share of child killings, mainly like never solved child killings now back in the day in the victorian era you know hull was it was it was a, a fishing city it was a, it was a port it was very powerful there was lots of business industry really thriving it created a population boom within hull now as the population rate went up so did the murders and weirdly there was like a phenomenon in that era which was child killings for example in 1859 there were two murders of children reported on the same day in the same city in 1873 a young boy was just snatched from the streets he was called joseph cowling he was found dead hours later in a park and the killer just covered him in a few twigs in order to try and conceal the body. In 1888, a young girl was found to have been sexually assaulted and beaten to death. This was at a Hull rail embankment. A few years later, a child was simply playing outside her house with a sibling. She was snatched by a stranger. No one knew who this was. No one ever found out who this was. The little girl was discovered with her throat slit. So there was just a spate of children being killed. Now, of course, you know, the fact that it was in the same geographical location, you would imagine is, is just a coincidence, unless there was, you know, a serial killer around that time. But obviously, you know, the case of Jane Crompton was was not a serial killer at all, but was in the city of Hull and, and was just a tragedy on so many levels. But, it, you know, it's just a, it's, it's almost like a relief to to know that although not perfect at all of course our knowledge and understanding of mental health as well as it as the taboo being reduced really helps avoid situations such as what happened with jane crompton but yeah this was like a a little amalgamation video, you know, of one specific crime case and then some some neighboring ones within the same kind of area, the same kind of demographic of a victim, if you like that being children in this case. What did you think 
of this video i'd love to know this is my first true crime video in probably about two months i took a little break from them because obviously they are very dark and um yeah i'm not going to take another two month break from them they will be you know strewn throughout my content but i would just love to know your thoughts what is your favorite kind of content that i make i would love to know you know is it the paranormal is it the true crime is it the conspiracy is it the reaction stuff is it the you know the 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 theory type videos let me know down below do you have any cases you would like me to cover apologies if this wasn't the smoothest I'm a little bit rusty when it comes to true crime cases, but I hope that you enjoyed nonetheless. If you'd like to support me as a creator, the best way you can do that is, well, to be honest, turning up, switching on the videos and watching, you know, hit that like button and, and comment. But if you want to go the extra mile, I do have a Patreon. I, it's, it's a pound a month. There is also a five pound tier, but everything is available in that pound a month tier. I didn't want to price anyone out on that Patreon. So it's a pound a month. I do a weekly video every single Monday where I sit down and I'm like, look, this is what I'm going to be doing this week. This is what I've been doing. This is my thought process. This is how I'm doing. It's just like a place for me to kind of unload my mind. And, you know, the, the patrons over there seem to really be enjoying it. I'm also doing like behind the scenes stuff. I'm showing thumbnails. I'm showing screenshots from videos before they come out and stuff. I'm, I'm you know, asking questions and all that good stuff. So there's, there's a cool dialogue going on there. If that is something that you think would appeal to you, then amazing. Um, please do get involved. But if not, like I say, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. And, uh, and yeah, come and enjoy my content. There's a few Ancient Ramen related content coming this week. And the winner of the Polaroid, which is here, will be announced in that video coming up. So you want to get over to ancient ram in video and comment your favorite part slash most scariest part if you want to enter to potentially win this signed polaroid from me in the ancient ram in okay thank you so much guys i really do appreciate it and i will see you very soon sweet one good